In this video, we are going to show you how to get your 40 Authenticator up and running. This will include logging into the application for the first time, connecting it to your network, setting up LDAP authentication, and configuring single sign-on. Let's get started. There are many ways to integrate a 40 Authenticator into your enterprise network, but for this video, we will be focusing on one of the more common scenarios. For this layout, we have a 40 Authenticator, a 40 Gate, a remote LDAP server on Active Directory, and endpoints using single sign-on to authenticate with just a password. The first thing we need to do is set up the 40 Authenticator hardware to allow us to configure the system. There are two methods of gaining access to the settings of your 40 Authenticator unit. The first is through the console port via the command line interface, which is covered in the 40 Authenticator Quick Start Guide and not shown in this tutorial. The second is through the web manager via your browser. To gain access through your browser, we will need to make a couple of changes to the management computer. By default, the IP address on port 1 of the 40 Authenticator unit is set to 192.168.1.99. To access that network address, plug in your managing computer into port 1 and manually change your IP address to 192.168. .1.2, with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Once those changes have been set, open your browser and type in the URL address https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.99. The default username is admin, and there is no password. The first thing we will do in the 40 Authenticator GUI is update the default admin user. Click on the Authentication menu, then User Management, then Local Users. Here you will see our local admin account. Click on the name to edit. Then, click Change Password and enter in something with at least 8 characters. You should spend some time later filling out the user information for this account to include email addresses, a phone number, and other important info. For now though, just click OK. Next, we have to configure the 40 Authenticator to be accessible on your network. Navigate to the System menu, Network, and DNS. Enter in your internal network primary and secondary name server IP addresses and click OK. Now click on Interfaces. You can see the default information for port 1 in which we are currently connected. Click on port 1. Enter in an appropriate IP address and subnet for your network. Click OK. At this point, you should disconnect your management computer and connect port 1 to your local network. Go ahead and set the IP address of the management computer to DHCP or an appropriate manual address and connect it to the same subnet as your 40 Authenticator. Proceed to log back in using the new address. Next, return to Network Settings and select Static Routing so that we can set up the default gateway. Click Create New, and in the Gateway Text field, enter in the appropriate address for your gateway. Click OK. With your appliance on the network, we can now configure it to talk to the remote LDAP server. Navigate to the Fortinet SSO Methods menu, Domain Controllers, and Create New. Enter in all the appropriate information for your domain controller and click OK when finished. Next, click on the General Menu item. Under the Fortinet Single Sign-On section, enable Windows Active Directory Domain Controller Polling and click OK. Your 40 Authenticator is now connected to your Active Directory server. We can check this by going to the Monitor menu and checking the settings for our domain. You can also look to make sure everything is connected in the Domain Controllers area. Now that our 40 Authenticator and our remote LDAP server are communicating, we will get FSSO up and running. Navigate back to the Fortinet SSO Methods menu and General Area. In the FortiGate section, enable authentication if it isn't checked already, and type in a secret key. The default port is 8000, so make sure that is open on your firewall or change it to something more appropriate for your network. Click OK. Now the 40 Authenticator is ready to communicate with our FortiGate. To configure your FortiGate with FSSO, log into your FortiGate and navigate to User and Device. Select Single Sign-On and click Create New. Select the Fortinet Single Sign-On Agent tab and enter in a name, the IP address of the 40 Authenticator we just set up, and the secret key. Click Apply and Refresh a couple of times, and soon you will see a list of users slash groups located on your remote LDAP. Click OK. Now we will create a new network access policy for allowing internet access to only approved users on our domain. To do that, we will first have to set up an appropriate group. Select the User Groups item on the left and click Create New. Give your user group a name, select Fortinet Single Sign-On FSSO, and click on the Members list to add a group. Feel free to add as many groups as appropriate for your setup. Click OK. Next, navigate to the Policy and Objects menu and select IPv4 Policy. 
Select the policy that allows all access internet and click edit. Click on source and we will see new available entries to add to the policy. Select the user tab and the user group we just created. Click OK and our FortiGate is all set up. Now that our Forti Authenticator, Remote LDAP Server, and FortiGate are all communicating properly, when a member of our user group logs onto the domain, they will abide by our firewall policy and gain the appropriate network access. We can see this by logging in as a domain user and opening a browser. Then, go to the Forti Authenticator's Monitor menu and SSO section. Here are all the current domain users that are currently logged into the system. Notice that the source of the logon event is named DC Polling. If we look at the FortiGate's Monitor menu and Firewall User Monitor section, you can also see the firewall policy information for our user. An optional but more secure alternative than SSO via DC Polling is the Single Sign-On Mobility Agent. The difference lies in how the endpoint information is sent to the Forti Authenticator. When a user authenticates via DC Polling, a normal domain login occurs, and then logon events are passed from the domain controller to the Forti Authenticator. For the single sign-on mobility agent, Forti Client is used on the endpoint machine to send status reports to the Forti Authenticator directly. Since Forti Client contacts the Forti Authenticator in regular intervals, there is always a current record of logon activity using this method. Let's go ahead and set this up for our scenario. In the Forti Authenticator's SSO methods menu, navigate to the Fortinet single sign-on section, Check the box for Enable Forti Client SSO Mobility Agent Service and enter in a different secret key. The default port for this service is 8001, so like mentioned previously, make any changes that are necessary for your network. Click OK. Next, as an administrator, open a Forti Client Endpoint Console on a machine attached to your domain. Go to File and Settings. Select Enable Single Sign-On Mobility Agent. Enter in the IP address, port number, and secret key we used earlier and click OK. When the endpoint user logs onto the machine using their domain credentials, they will also have full access to the internet using the single sign-on mobility agent. We can double check that the user is being authenticated correctly by going back into the Forti Authenticator and looking at the monitored SSO sessions again. Notice that the user source now says Forti Client. And with a final look at the FortiGate's firewall user monitor, we can see that our users are securely accessing the internet. That concludes our basic setup video for Forti Authenticator. For more technical videos, visit video.fortinet.com. Thank you for watching.